Okay, so you want to add controllers to your game, just like this. It's really easy, I'll show you how. Regular inputs are really straightforward. Under project settings, in your input map, all you need to do is add an action. So if you were going to do up, down, left, right, and the process is the exact same thing as keyboard inputs. You just come over to here and you go add event and it's listening for an event. I've got my controller here, I press up. It says joypad 11 D-pad up. And then same for down, left, and right, and so on and so forth for every single button you have. And same thing for analog sticks. So I'll call this one left, joy, left. And then I'll click plus and go left on the joy, joystick. And it says left stick, left, joypad access zero minus one. And you can do that. And so you can say, and do that for every single access. Left, joy, right, same exact thing. Just move the analog stick to the right and you've got joypad access zero plus. Okay, and so on and so forth for all the other axes. And the last being the analog triggers. So we'll go uh, uh, left trigger here. Fundamentally, it's all the same. You can just click plus, press that button. You've got left trigger. You can see here it says Sony L2, Xbox LT, joystick to right. So it's pretty universal and it should pick up your controller. If you aren't getting your controller detected in this process, what you can do is go to hardwaretester.com slash gamepad and see if your computer even detects your gamepad. Here, you should see input from your gamepad. If you don't see it here, there might be something else you need to troubleshoot with your computer. Other than that, there is a known issue with Steam in which Steam takes all the input and doesn't pass it on to the rest of your computer, which um, you can get around, check the GitHub, but also uh, you can just run the local version of Godot without Steam running if you need to get around that. I, that worked for me. I'm on Linux right now, so it doesn't really matter. Getting regular input is really easy. You can just use is action pressed or input dot is action pressed or input dot is action just pressed, depending on what you're looking for. Is action pressed returns true as long as the input is whole held and is action just pressed will only return true for one frame after the button has been pressed. So it just depends on what you're doing. Play around with those functions. Here I'm using is action pressed because we're just trying to check if the input is pressed. Analog sticks, it's much the same story. There are a few different options and I'll show you them now. For the left analog stick, you can see here I'm using input.getVector in the process function. Input.getVector will return a vector to, which will be the combination of all of the inputs that you put here. So you've got your left, your right, your up, and your down. And you can combine those together to get your X and your Y for your vector. If you're using that for uh, movement or aiming, that's what you use. You might need to play around with the positioning of those, but obviously it's X first, then Y. And I just gone left, right, up, and then down for this one. It's probably gonna be pretty universal, but there's no guarantees. With how dead zones work in Godot, just know that as soon as you start pressing this button, once you've uh, gone over the threshold for your dead zone, uh, it will start grabbing all of the input for this. So uh, you can set the dead zone here, if you go project settings dot input map, the dead zone's up here. And once you've started pressing this, it'll start coming through. If I go back to hardware tester, you can see that there's always a little bit of up and down. So just know as soon as you're over that point too, you're gonna start to get that. So I don't feel like it works very good for aiming a gun, say for example, but it's great or perfectly fine for movement, in my opinion. It just depends on what you're looking for. So just use whatever you feel works best. And so, Get vector is pretty good. If you don't want to use get vector, the other option you have for your analog sticks, and I've got it here on the right analog, is get access. Other than getting input for the vector, you can just get the axis. So that'll be your left and right, and your up and down, and you can map those to uh, separate floats and then bring them into a vector too. Now, the advantage here is that those dead zones for each axis are respected rather than given an average for all of them. So this is much better for aiming, I think, in my opinion. Okay, and the final analog input that we want to look at is the left and right triggers. Rather than having a negative one and positive one, we just need to get zero, between zero and one. And we can do that with 
get action strength. So we can just go float input dot get action strength, and that'll give you a number between zero and one. And you can use that for all sorts of cool things. You can see here, I am filling up this red bar with it, depending on how far it's pressed down, which is pretty cool. This is a progress bar, progress bar dot value equals trigger strength. So that's just a very basic example of how you can use that analog input. The only thing to keep in mind is if this input is not a analog input, it's just gonna go from zero to one straight away. But if you do have an analog one, you can play around and do some pretty cool things. Here's a real in-game example using my third-person shooter tutorial, which you can watch on YouTube or buy on Udemy. Now, here I'm using the get access, and you can see that I rotate perfectly around the character, which is exactly what you want. Here you can see that I've replaced my input.get axis with input.get vector. Now let's take a look at the difference this has when you're rotating the camera. As you can see in the bottom, you can see that the axis value is very small, 0.05, but it is creating an upward and downward movement on the camera rotation as I orbit around the character, which is definitely something you don't want if you're playing an action game. This is a real world example. So let's have a look at how this works. You're getting the axis, you're passing this onto a joy input. We're multiplying it by a sensitivity factor here, which you can expose in your settings. 0.1 is what I've gone with, but it's, I find that maybe a little bit too sensitive. If you've got this in the physics process, um, which is probably the best place for this function. You don't really need to worry too much about delta. I'm passing it through here, but I'm not using it uh, because physics is a constant frame rate. But if you were using regular process, you would need to multiply by delta. Um, camera look is just a cumulative input. So we're just passing the input continuously to camera look, and that's just rotating the camera by whatever the amount is. So if it was all the way to the right, it would be a one multiplied by whatever joy sensitivity, right? And that's it. For vibration, all you need to do is use input.startVibration. This takes in the device. If it's, uh, so you can find that it's generally going to be, it's an array number. So zero would be the first joystick input. So you can see that again in the hardware, you can see the index for my um, DualSense controller is zero. I don't have any other controllers to test, but it's going to be uh, I guess just the number of controllers that you have connected. So if you've got multiplayer, maybe take that into consideration. Um, you've got weak magnitude, strong magnitude, and duration. So those are the ones that you want to be using. It just looks like this, start joy vibration. And I've got one 1.05 seconds. And this is in my uh, <laughs> my button event. So if I press the button, it should vibrate. And it does very very gently. It's not, it's not a very strong vibration, but if I start spamming the buttons, uh, it, there's a lot of vibration happening here, which is pretty interesting. Okay. So really easy for that one. And you can see in a real world example, you can see here when I'm shooting, I'm just setting that input start joy vibration. So when I shoot, um, uh, uh, a bullet, it'll vibrate a little bit. That's pretty much it. So really, really straightforward there. Okay, so focus. Something that is important to remember is that if you don't want your controller to receive input when the game is not in focus, so maybe they've clicked away to another screen or something like that, and you don't want the controller to continue taking input, then you need to set up a singleton called focus and pass every single event uh, that you're going to get through that singleton. So I have an example here that I've set up it's under uh, left analog, I believe. You can see here uh, in the focus script, we've got a bunch of uh, functions here. Input is action pressed, event, event is action pressed. So depending on what you're doing, you just pass through and you'll need to create a function for each input event that you want to check. I've created one here. So you can just get this straight from the documentation, by the way. Um, I've got, uh, I've added an extra function here for get vector, which just takes an array of string names and it just processes them 0, 1, 2, 3. And if you go to left uh, analog, I've got a version of that here. So this is what it would look like focus.input get vector rather than input.get vector. And you just pass that as an array. And if I run the game now, now if I'm inside the game, you can see all the triggers moving. But if I click off, you can see now the left analog stick doesn't work. So that's just how that works. You would need to set up all your inputs to go through that mechanism, which you don't need to do if you have a keyboard because keyboards don't work the same way.
One really cool thing I noticed about this is that you can actually use this to your advantage to create an overlay for controllers within Godot. So I've created this, which is just a literal transparent window that shows the controller. It can either be an Xbox or a PS5, depending on your um, the controller that you use. And it takes the input and you can display this on your stream or whatever, and it can show you what you're pressing, which is pretty fun. Um, I don't know how popular something like this would be, but I made it anyway. Uh, and yeah, if you want to download and have a look at all the different inputs that you can use, you can download it for that. If you want to use this as a display, as a way to display your gaming on, on OBS, you can do that too. All right. Um, other than that, guys, I hope this has been helpful. Like and subscribe if it has. And if you're feeling extra generous, you can always become a member. You get access to the entire third person shooter course, which I show you how to create a comprehensive third person character controller. And also you can join the discord where we're hanging out and talking game dev, or you can join me on the streams every other weekend or so, depending on how I feel. But other than that, guys, that's all for this week. I'll see you next time.